Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to everybody watching today electronically. Welcome to a Sunday of the Solemnity of the Body and Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, also known as Corpus Christi Sunday. Good to be here today. I'm glad you guys are here. We had a, a short but a nice little Bible study, I think. Today we're talked about, by the way, in our Bible study about what it is really to be a Christian. What does God require of me? And he does require and expect certain things. So that's what we're going to be talking about in our Bible studies in the next few weeks. But anyways, it's good to be here today. I'm glad you all joined me. And with all that being said, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers, my sisters, to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God forgive us our sins, pardon and absolve us of all things, and by the Holy Spirit bring us to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, in the Eucharist we share your beloved Son has left to us a perpetual memorial of his passion. Deepen our reverence for the sacred mystery of his body and blood. And as we are nourished at this table, grant that we may experience within ourselves the fruit of his redemptive love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to his people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all of your journeying into the desert. So as you test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments, he therefore led you to be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with mama, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you not by your bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth and from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert, and with its ser ser serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought you forth water for you, and from the flinty rock, and fed you in the desert with mama, a food unknown to your fathers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God. Response Psalm. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Yeah, hallelujah. That's the response. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob his statutes, and his ordinance to Israel. He has not done this for any other nation. His ordinance he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of the blessing that we bless is not participating in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is that not participating in the body of Christ. Because the loaves of bread is one. We, though many, are one body. For we all partake of one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good, amen? Amen, for sure. Great reading today, Mark. I enjoyed it. Our gospel reading for today is going to be our text. And a couple verses out of that gospel reading from John the 5th chapter. As soon as I get over there. John chapter 6, verses 54, 55, and 58. Listen carefully. Jesus is talking. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And then verse 58. This is the bread which came down from heaven, that as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for this reading of your word on this blessed Sunday to celebrate the solemnity of your body and blood, Lord Christ. Father, thank you for that the unity we have here in the chapel amongst brothers and the unity we have there amongst those who watch electronically. And we don't know countless others who are watching and receiving you today. And Father, we pray that we see you we see your Son, who was sent through you to be our Savior. That through his body and blood, we have the forgiveness of our sins, the assurance of everlasting life. And help us respond to your word by living the way you would have us live. I thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for all that we're doing here. And thank you for my brothers. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and they died, but he who eats this bread will live forever. Today on this Corpus Christi, or this celebration of the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, I want to title today's message, True Food and True Drink. True Food and True Drink. You know, we just celebrated Pentecost. And what was Pentecost all about? You guys remember? Mm-hmm. Coming of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the people that they might preach the gospel to all nations. And then we celebrated Trinity Sunday, which is the foundation of our faith, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now today, we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ. And this is actually something Jesus gave us each to do as we get together for Mass. Jesus said to the disciples on the night he was betrayed, Take and eat, this is my body, as he broke bread and handed it to them. And then he said, Drink from this, all of you, as he gave them a chalice of wine. 
And he said, for this is my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of all of your sins. These words of Jesus, along with the bread and wine, are for us a sacrament whereby Christ uses physical things, the bread and the wine, to convey grace to those who receive it, which is us, and we receive him. That's the grace in the sacrament, right? Bread and wine, we receive him along with his word. For what purpose? For the forgiveness of of our sins. See, the sacrament of Holy Communion or the Eucharist was given to us by Christ to unite us, to unite us with God through Jesus' body and blood, and also to unite us to one another as we share the bread and we share the cup, and as we recognize that we are all sinners in need of Christ and in need of one another. That's the part we usually forget. We need Christ. We also need one another. Christianity is not a lone ranger type of religion. <laughs> we need each other. Hence we're the church. And the church is the collection of the true believers in Christ. And so we need each other. You see, we receive more than simple bread and wine in the sacrament. We also receive the body and the blood of Christ. Well, how? How can that be? A very simple reason. Because Jesus said that's how it is. You know, it always amazes me we can believe so many things of the Scripture. But yet when it comes to the body and blood of Christ, and the fact that Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, it tends to separate believers. I don't get it. Why we can accept certain things Jesus said, but that one thing we can't seem to agree on and to accept, which is what Christ gave us to unify us. The Apostle Paul said in the reading today, if you caught it, he said, is not the cup of blessing a sharing in the blood of Christ? And he said, is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Do you see the faith of the ancient church brought down from Christ to his disciples, ratified by Paul, and even today we celebrate the same thing. It is the body and the blood of Christ. To deny the reality of Christ being present in the bread and wine is to deny Christ. To deny the reality of Christ present is to deny the teachings of the early church and even to deny the scriptures of which we say are true and stand forever. See, do we understand everything about our faith? No, we don't. Do we understand everything? No. We don't understand it. We can't understand it all. Because if we tried, our mind would explode. <laughs> and we would just never get there. We can't understand it. But we believe it. Because if Christ said it, then we believe it. Because did not Jesus say we need the faith of a child? Yeah. To believe what he says and then to live by what he says. This holy communion not only shows ourselves in union with God and that we accept Jesus as our Savior, but it also shows communion amongst one another as well. It shows union with God through Christ and shows union with one another as the church. <clears throat> Paul said, since there is one bread. How many breads are there? One bread, right? And that's the reference to... We who are many are one body. How many bodies? One. One body, which is the church. How many churches are there? One church. One true church. For we all partake of the one bread. There's one bread that we all partake of, which is the body of Christ. You know, it's so sad to see so many, so many Christians, so many people, want to have different opinions of the Holy Eucharist or the Holy Communion. Some say, well, it's only symbolic. Jesus didn't say this symbolizes my body and blood, did he? He said it is. Yes. 
Some say it's only a ritual. Jesus didn't say to his disciples, partake in this ritual. He said, as often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Some say it does nothing at all for us. I've heard that one. Well, that's really throwing a baby out with the bathwater, huh? <laughs> it does everything for us. These beliefs that I just mentioned are all contrary to Scripture and will only lead to destroy one's faith. If you hear anybody say these things, run. It'll ruin your soul. They'll only destroy one's faith. Jesus said in the Gospel reading for today, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He's not talking about cannibalism as the ancient Romans accused the Christians of. They were accused of cannibalism. He's not talking about that. Jesus gives validity and purpose in the sacrament. Listen, as Christians, our life has purpose, doesn't it? Would you agree with that? Yes. Our life has purpose, maybe new purpose that we never thought of before. Everything Jesus did and said has purpose. And what he's saying is, if you are in me, I am in you, and you will have eternal life. And as we come together to the sacrament of Holy Communion, we should think about these things that Jesus said. Think about them, meditate on them, so that we may know him and have eternal life. That here at the altar, here at the altar, we take his body. Why? Because he said so. He said we would. He said we are. This is my body. And here at the altar, we take his blood. Why? Because he said so. He said, this is my blood. But here's the next question. Why do we do these things? Why? Why do we come to this altar? Why do we come to receive the body and the blood of Christ? What did Jesus say? He said, do this for the forgiveness of your sins, uh -huh. that we should have eternal life. See, that goes just contrary to those that say it's only a ritual, mm -hmm. to those that say it's only symbolic, to those that say it doesn't do anything. Jesus said, it is what it is, so you receive forgiveness. A ritual, as some claim it to be, only does nothing for you. <laughs> does nothing for you. It makes you public, makes you noticed. You might feel good about yourself for a little bit, but here it does really nothing at all. But we take, we take with the bread and the wine, the body and the blood of Christ. And that's what works wonders in us. Not the fact that we came up here. It's who we receive. It's not even what we receive. It's who we receive. Right. Make sense? That's what works wonders in us. Just like faith. In faith in Christ, who do we receive? We receive Christ, don't we? In the body and blood of the Holy Eucharist, we receive Christ. So here we are today to celebrate the body and blood of Christ. So what should be our main focus today? Not just here when you come to the altar, but today. The fact that we are saved through Christ. That's our focus. That's our focus. His blood is drink, his body is food, he said. Given to us for eternal life. For Jesus said in our text today, This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. That's what he's talking about in the Holy Eucharist. Do you get what this is all about today? What I've been talking about? When we receive Christ in the sacrament, we receive forgiveness and eternal life as promised. So now what? Now what do we do? Now what do we do? we got a choice. When we leave here today, or anybody out there watching, when you receive Holy Communion the next time, you've got a choice to make. The choice is you can go back and do the same old thing you've always been doing, every day. 
and act as if it has no change in you. That would be like the person that said, the Holy Eucharist does nothing for me. Or, we can go back and live a changed life, forgiven and strengthened through Christ. See, are we drinking too much when you leave here? Are you drinking too much? Anybody? Anybody out there? You drink too much? When you leave here after receiving the communion, stop doing it. Don't do it anymore. Find ways to stop. Are you smoking weed too much? Stop doing it. Find Get, get help. Stop doing these things. Are you spiritually lethargic? I like that. Sounds good, hey? Are you spiritually lethargic? To that, I say, wake up. Uh. Wake up. Are you rebellious with spiritual authority? To that I say, knock it off. And the list goes on and on. See, if we believe in the body and the blood of Christ, which is Christ himself to save us, why keep doing the things he doesn't want us to do? We've got to ask ourselves, why? Why am I doing these things? Why don't I stop? Then we should start asking ourselves, what do I need so I can stop and begin to follow Christ more intently and more closely and begin to live this changed life he promises. You know, Christ only changes us as much as we're willing to be changed. Now, we know each other in this room. We know each other long enough. I've known you guys for years. And we've known each other out there and you people watching long enough. In fact, I talked to somebody yesterday uh, when I was down at the antique store on, on Pierce. Her name is Bonnie. She talked to me. She watches all the time. Really? I didn't know that. That's what I said. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. Where on Pierce? 15. Okay. Yeah, anyways, we've known each other long enough to see where we need a little bit of spiritual tweaking. <laughs> Don't we? <laughs> We know each other long enough to know where we need some spiritual tweaking. That's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. The body and the blood of Christ. May the Lord forgive us. And may we live to honor Him. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for the blessing you've given us of this holy word today through the reading of the gospel, the preaching of the message. Father, may it sink in. May it stir us up into action a little bit. May it may even make us a little upset. It's okay. Sometimes we need that so we can keep moving forward. But help us, Lord, live our lives for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's share our Christian faith with one another in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, Begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And the following this morning is known as the Great Litany. To be, O God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O God the Holy Spirit, Sanctifier of the faithful, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. O Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, One God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord. Spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. And by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare, Spare us, good Lord. Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, <clears throat> from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good, Good Lord, Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, Lord deliver us. us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. By the mystery of the Holy Incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver, deliver us. us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of thy Holy Ghost, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by thy preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We, we beseech, beseech thee, thee to hear us, O Lord, Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We, we beseech, beseech thee, thee to hear us, us O Lord, Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We, we beseech, beseech thee to hear us, us O Lord, Lord. <clears throat> that it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We, we beseech, beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, Lord, that it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as, as have erred and are deceived. We, we beseech, beseech thee to hear us, hear us good Lord, Lord, that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and to fear thee, 
and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of our servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the way of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that we may please thee to make words to cease in all the world, to give all the nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, mm -hmm. and all who are desolate and oppressed. That it may please thee to us, the Lord. Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to use our bountiful, bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in all in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of hearts as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve all who are endangered by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all those whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear, to hear us, us, good Lord, that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all of our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant in the fellowship of St. Martin's and all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take away the sins of the world, grant us thy grace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, o Christ, hear, us. Christ hear us. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are Yahweh, our God, King of the universe. For you bring forth grain from the earth, may this gift of yours become for us our communion in the body and the blood of Christ. Father, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully renewed the dignity of our human nature. Through the water and wine mingled here, grant us share in the divine life of Jesus, who humbled himself to share in our humility. And blessed are you, Yahweh our God, King of the universe, for you bring forth the fruit of the vine. May this gift of yours become for us our communion in the blood of Christ. Father, receive us as we come to this table and, in, and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins, and wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sins, and unseal my lips, O Lord, that I may give you praise. Let us pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands in the praise, praise and glory of his name for our good and for good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is just and right. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise, for together with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in Trinity and persons. In the upper room, as you shared a final meal with your disciples, Jesus, you offered yourself as the Lamb without blemish, the acceptable sacrifice that gives praise and perfect peace. In that moment, he instituted and commanded us to continually celebrate this memorial of his passion, that we may be nourished with your saving power until the end of the ages. And so today at the table we share, you fulfill your celebration with holiness, draw us together in love, and transform us through the work of your grace into the likeness of the risen Lord. And therefore now we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the saints of every time and place, who forever sing this hymn to the praise and glory of your holy name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus your Son you reveal the depth of your love. Through him you have liberated us from our slavery into sin and death, and made us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we have gathered at this altar, and we give thanks for these gifts of, our cre of your creation, this bread and the wine. Sanctify them now by your power of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night before his death, while at supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke it, 
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is the body which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup filled with wine and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever at your side. At this intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may become a living sacrifice, wholly dedicated to your service. May the same Spirit make us one, one in faith we profess, one with those who minister to your church, especially Tyler Archbishop, Bernard Abbott General, and one with those who sorrow, one with those who rejoice, one with the sick and suffering and the dying, one with our departed brothers and sisters whom we commend to your perfect love. When we falter, Father, and our steps leave your path, bring us back to your ways with gentle compassion. So that at the last day, together with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, and all the saints, we may take our place among your great cloud of witnesses, united with you for all eternity. To the merits and mercy of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our living Lord. Through him, with him, in him. To you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for these gifts we have in the holy body and blood, given us for our salvation. And now taught by the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And through the Eucharist, grant us the peace and unity of the kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, you take, take away the, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
by the will of the Father and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. May your holy body and blood free me of all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this Holy Eucharist, in a physical and spiritual way, my prayer is that all you that are watching today and can't be here would receive Christ into your heart and let him be Lord and Savior of your life. Come and receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Is the blood of Christ, the chalice of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord and receive the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining today, you guys. It's always good to be here. Enjoyed our Bible study today, the 10 minutes that it was. <laughs> and truly enjoyed the Holy Mass and the Eucharist. You know, especially on the day we celebrate the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what it's all about. You know, in the early church, they used to say the first thing they set up was this right here. 
set up the altar so we can start to say the Holy Eucharist in the Mass. So remember always today, all throughout the day, today is the body and blood of Christ. It's Him who saves us, it's Him who leads us, it's Him who calls us into action to follow Him. And I'll see you all in two weeks. Next week, uh, I won't be here, you guys know, but for everybody out there, I'll be out in California uh, next week, Sunday. Um, but I'll, I'll be back uh, next Sunday morning, so we won't have Mass here next Sunday, but we will the following week. So, God bless you. God always be with you. Amen? Amen. 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 With that being said, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God.